Welcome to another Server Lab tutorial. I'm Shane Rainville. Today, we're going to look at how to deploy your web applications using Ansible. We're going to start off with just doing a simple deployment from the command line using Ansible. From there, we'll create a playbook so that we don't have to remember typing out a lengthy command. After that, we'll then dive into how to use Git to pull down from a Git repository and deploy your files that way. And finally, we're going to create an Ansible role so that we can deploy our application as part of our provisioning process for our servers. First example, we're going to copy a local directory and its contents over to our remote host. Our remote host is going to be an Apache web server. If you're familiar at all with Ansible, you know that we need an inventory file. The inventory file, for those who don't know, is basically where we specify our servers and we group them. Those groups are what are referenced inside of our Ansible playbooks or from the command line, which we'll do in uh, this example. So let's take a look at ours. We've creatively called ours inventory and you'll notice the first line is our group. The group name is web apps. We know it's a group because it's encapsulated by brackets. Underneath the name is web app 01, which is our web instance. Uh, you could have any number of servers underneath the group name. Below that is another special grouping called all colon vars. So basically these are just variables that are going to be applied to all groups. You'll notice that I'm putting a sudo password and clear text into my inventory file. Uh, I can't stress this point enough. That's a big no-no. Great for demonstrations, great for local development, not good for uh, live production environments where you're sharing your playbooks and inventory files and whatnot. A better solution would be to use Ansible Vault, for example, to encrypt your sensitive data in AES-256. Keeping in mind that doing so is still leaves you vulnerable to a brute force attack, but at least it's better than not having clear text. So let's exit our inventory file and actually run our Ansible command. So we're targeting our web apps group and we're going to use uh, the copy module and it has two attributes uh, as a minimum source, which is going to be our dist directories. That's where our static assets are and dest, which is the, the directory of the remote host. Okay. And Ansible doesn't actually know about the web apps group because it doesn't have an inventory file by default. We actually have to tell Ansible where our inventory file is. And finally, we're going to use the B flag because we need elevated privileges to actually copy into that directory on the remote host. So that's what B does. It's essentially saying run the sudo command with my command. Okay, here we are, we're playing it and we have success. We've, we see that we successfully changed the state, meaning our files were copied. Uh, we only have one file and we're seeing that here, index.html. You're gonna have a lot more than that. But the important thing here is that we see that our data was copied successfully. If we wanted to verify that, we could SSH onto uh, the web host, go into the directory, and uh, there you have it. There's our index.html file that we just copied over. In this example, we're gonna do what we did in the previous one, but rather than learning and remembering a very lengthy command, we're gonna put all that information inside of an Ansible playbook. Now we've opened up our workspace inside of VS Code just to make it easier for you to follow along. So what you'll see is we have our dist directory here. Uh, inside of it is our single index.html. This is going to be our static file asset um, that you're going to be uploading to the remote host. Nothing changes here. Now do remember that this is going to be a recursive task. So anything in here, including subdirectories, will be copied up. We're just using a single file as an example. Here's our inventory file, identical to our first example, nothing's changed here. And finally, what's different is now we have a web app deploy.yaml file. This is our Ansible playbook if you're not familiar with Ansible. So what we have here is, here's the group name from our inventory file. We're targeting the web apps group. Below that we have become. Now this is like the B flag. We are basically telling Ansible we need to become sudo to actually complete this task because we're copying it into a directory that we don't have permissions to. 
And finally, here's our tasks. Um, we're naming it copy files to remote host. And you'll notice that we have the same attributes uh, as we did from the command. We have source and we have dest. Now source is the dist file that you see and dest is the remote directory that we're copying things into. In addition to that, we've also provided attributes for owner, group, and mode. Mode being the file permissions. Now, what you see here is what you would expect for an, an Apache web server, and those are gonna be inherited anyways. We don't even need to put that here, but this is a good way of explicitly making sure that a file or a folder has the permissions and ownerships that you need it to have. Great, now that we have reviewed the Ansible playbook, uh, let's run it. Unlike our previous example where we ran the Ansible command, we're going to use the Ansible-playbook command. And like before, we have to specify an inventory file, so we're going to do that here. And lastly, we're just going to say, here's the playbook that we want you to run. Easy peasy. So right away you can see that you're getting a far more verbose output, right? You're seeing the different tasks, you're seeing the different operations that are happening. But you're also getting a nice little status at the bottom, at the bottom where we're gonna see if things have changed, if they failed, uh, whatever happened at a glance. And what we can see is that uh, our copy files to remote host has a change status. This is a good sign. This means that things have actually been copied over to the remote host. This is what we wanted to see. Now, if nothing has changed, let's take a look at what would happen. Let's run our playbook again. Now you can see that the status is okay. Okay basically means nothing has changed. We're not doing anything because we don't have a reason to do anything. Um, so we know that our first attempt was successful. We can also verify by SSHing on to uh, that server again and checking that directory. And there you have it, there's our file. There's the permissions. Everything looks great. So in this example, we're going to go in a little bit of a different direction. Rather than copying a local directory onto a remote host, we're going to clone a Git repository and put the contents of that repo onto the remote host. So in our workspace, we've opened up all the files using VS Code, and here you have it. Here's our inventory file again. It's identical to what we've used before. We also have our web app deploy playbook. The first thing you'll notice is that rather than using the copy module in our task, we are going to use the git module. And the git module wants to know the repo URL. And we specified that. Now that's a random uh, repository that we've just came across in GitHub. We also need to specify the dest attribute, just like the copy module. Uh, and once again, we're targeting slash var slash www slash HTML. Now we've added the force attribute um, just to eliminate any kind of issues. You may want to do that, you may not. Uh, this will just mean that, for example, if you already have cloned everything onto your remote host and everything and nothing has changed, uh, Ansible will actually come back with an error. We don't want that. In this example, we just want to make sure that everything copies over no matter what. So like in previous examples, we're going to use the Ansible playbook command and we're going to specify our inventory. We are going to also specify our playbook and let's run it and see what happens. There you have it. All our files have been cloned from the Git repository onto the remote system and placed in our destination, in our destination directory. And of course we need to validate that. So let's SSH into that box and navigate to that directory. And there's our files. And we have successfully deployed our application. All right, it's time to bump up the complexity to the next level. Having a single playbook to do your deployment is fine for testing, but chances are you're going to want the deployment to be part of your provisioning process when you're launching new web application servers. To do that, we're gonna use Ansible rules now, we've already opened up our workspace inside of VS Code, 
and you'll notice right away that now we have an inventory directory and a rules directory. Our inventory directory is going to host all our inventory files. So now we can have one for every environment that we have. In this example, we have production and we have staging. If we open up production, which is what we're going to target, uh, you see that we're just basically using what we've used in the past. Now our rules directory is where all our Ansible rules are stored and the directory names are essentially the role name. We have one for Apache 2 to make sure that Apache is installed. We have app deploy, which is going to do our deployment. And then we have common, which is pretty self-explanatory. All the common tasks that need to be done with our servers. Now we've renamed our uh, playbook just to web app. And that's just so that we know that this is only going to apply against our web apps group in our inventory file. Okay. And the biggest thing you'll, the biggest change you'll notice is that we don't specify tasks. We now have roles and the roles are targeting the different ones that we've seen in the role directory. The first two roles are just a name, but the third one for our app deploy uh, is actually encapsulated in brackets. And we did this as an example to show you that if you have variables in your role, you can actually set it here, right? If you want to override something, as in this example, I want to make sure that I'm always using version 1.0.0 of my release. I can do that here and that's great. The other thing to take note of is that everything is going to execute in order. So first we're going to kick off the common tasks, then we're going to install Apache, and then finally we're going to do our app deploy. So like before, we're going to use the Ansible playbook command. And we're going to specify our inventory file. Our inventory file is under a directory and it's called production. So let's specify it. And we also need to specify our playbook. Nothing really has changed. Very similar to what we've done in the past. Great. Our, uh, our uh, playbook ran successfully. And you can see now that there's more tasks happening. Uh, we can see that the common one ran and it created a user. We can also see that Apache was installed and we can also see that our files were cloned from a Git repository. So once again, SSH onto the box and uh, just make sure that everything is the way we expect it. And there's your files. It looks like everything was deployed. Now, here's the interesting thing. Maybe you want to continue using this playbook to do your deployments because you have you just released a new version of your uh, application, but you don't want to reinstall Apache and you don't want to recreate users. You just want to do the deployment. So what do you do? Uh, the beauty of Ansible is we can tag everything. So to add a tag, uh, these are task based level uh, things we can just go tags and then it's an array, it's in a list of uh, items. So for this, it's going to be deploy. Now, when we run our playbook, we can specify just do anything that has the tag deploy. there you have it. We skipped all the other tasks that weren't necessary. We didn't install Apache. We didn't create the user. We just did a deploy of our code and that's all there is to it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial series and I hope that you subscribe to see ones that we release in the future. If you thought this was helpful, make sure that you click the like button at the bottom.